Hi and welcome back to part 4 of my video tutorial. Today I'm looking at Microsoft Word 2016 and the layout tab. So let's make a start. I'm going to start again from left to right starting on the ribbon. So I'm going to start with margins. So let's put some text in here first. And then scroll to the top. Now in margins, we'll select margins and choose which kind of margin you want. Now what I'm going to do first is, it'd be nice if we had the ruler option that we haven't got here at the moment, so I can see my margins when I make them more narrow or wider. So go up to the view tab on the ribbon and select ruler. Then go back to layout, that's the tab we're looking at. And now we see the ruler at the top and you can see my current margin at the top there. So when I go to margins and I change it for narrow, you can then see how it's changed at the top. Change margins again to moderate and as I go down the list and wide you can see how it's changed so I've got a wide margin there from left to right also we've got mirrored and if I go right down to the bottom you can create a custom margin if you want by changing the settings here you can even choose your landscape orientation there as well and you can apply this to the whole document or this point forward so if you started halfway through a document and you want to create these settings and margin from this point forward it would do it from this point if we click OK also at the top we've got paper and you choose your paper source here and your layout so section start new page and I'll show you these options in the breaks options as well and how to change them so there's your margin option there so I'm going to leave it on normal Next is orientation, so you can change whether you want to portrait or landscape. Currently we're in portrait, we can change it quickly to landscape. If I scroll up you can see that as well. Also a little tip here, you might not want that all in landscape view. Well it's no problem. Click the cursor at the end of your paragraphs on the first page and select breaks and select continuous. Insert a section break and start the new section onto the same page. Once we select that, then go to orientation and change it to portrait and now you can see at the top one I've got the landscape and underneath I have the portrait option change it back again make sure you're at the end click orientation and select portrait and then it will keep that the same that's nice if you need to change you might want a different orientation at the top next is size so A4 is the standard but you might be working with A3 so you can choose A3 format. Really important you work in the correct format, especially when you come to print Control P or File and select Print from there. Some people have an A3 printer, so that can be really useful. So make sure you print out the correct format. For example, you might be doing a legal one or a standard letter or even a B4 option. And then with size, if you go down to more paper sizes, you can create the exact size you want with width, height as well as we saw with the other options that we can change with margins as well now we're coming to columns I'm going to select columns and we can choose which columns we want for example we've got two columns so if I click on two columns here you can see it split it into two look at the ruler at the top so now I can start typing to the next section and you can see if I just keep my finger on the keys it goes into the next section. So that will split a page into two columns there for you if need be. Also in columns, you can even choose three if you want. So now you can see at the top with a ruler we have three columns that you can put into. And then you might just want the left column. So you've got more of a paragraph on the right. Then you can do left and right and you can see by the format how that works. If you go to more columns again, as you see with all the bottom, you can change exactly how you want that. You might decide you want lines between each column, so if I click OK, it creates this little border between them as well. Go back to columns and select more columns again. I'm going to untick that, but if you click on it, you can see the preview here underneath that helps you as well. You can choose your width and spacing between each column as well. Apply to this section or only from this point onwards if you're halfway through or quarter way through a document you could do that or you can have that for that whole document so you can choose exactly what part of that document you want to actually use those options in and click OK so there's your columns option but I'm going to go back to one column again to standard size which again was A4 
Next is uh, the brakes option. So we've got your main brake option when you create a brake. So let's go down here, let's go right to the bottom, and I might want to create a brake at the end, at the beginning of this paragraph. So I'll go up to the brake option and select page break. And then obviously it page breaks that paragraph down to a new page. We saw that earlier in part two in the insert option. But also in breaks you have column and you can create a column break, not just a page break. Let me explain. You know I was creating columns earlier. You might decide actually you want this as more of a column break rather than a page break. So have a click the cursor at the beginning there. Go to columns and then I can split that into two and then we have two columns. And again if you don't want that border down the middle remember go to columns, more options and untick line between and there you go, simple. And because that's the page I did it in, it only did that page. And if I wanted to do them all, I'm going to select columns, more columns, and then I could choose whole document. Scroll down, it does the whole document for me. So it does give you total control over your document. So I want to go back and click to one column again. So there's your breaks. And this will allow you to put text around your objects on web pages such as caption text and body text. So now we've got section break option. Now you see earlier when I was changing the orientation I selected continuous on the first page so that way I could turn that to landscape and leave the other support trait. But let me have a look at the next page. I'm scroll down and I'm going to click into that paragraph there and I'm going to select breaks and select the next page and that should just move that down for me just move into a new blank document for me also in breaks and you can see this continuous so it inserts a section break and start the new section on the same page that way it keeps it continuous they don't have a break by the way remember what I showed you go back to home if you have trouble seeing all your formatting this this will show all your formatting so you can see we've got a page break I've added there and that can be really useful as you're building your documents and you can see where I click the enter key with these options here as well so I click enter key give it that mark where I press the enter key but I'm going to go back to layout and go back to page breaks you can insert a section break and start the new section on a new even number pages as you can see here so every time you go to an even number it will then insert automatically insert a section break for you on even numbers same you have to do it manually and it same goes for odd numbers, so every time you do an odd number, 1, 3, 5, 7 and so on, it will automatically create a section break, a new page for you as you're going along. Because you might want to keep some pages continuous as one. So there's a page break option. Let's go into line numbers. Now what I'm going to do is I've got to be carried away with this document. I'm going to click into here and click control all and I'm going to delete all that by clicking backspace. Back to one page. I'm just going to add one page of text this time and column I'm going to choose one orientation I'm on portrait size A4 standard and columns I'm on the first column so I might have line numbers so if I click continuous that would then number each line that I've created there again you might want to use that to organize stuff I don't think you'd really use that for referencing that's not something you'd use on your reference list or you can choose restart each page so if we go down to a new page now we can do a section break can't we with the break button here or we can use the shortcut key which is control enter which I showed you earlier and that creates a section break and as you see the numbers continued because I selected restart on each page so then it will start one from each page as you go down same goes for each section as well if you go to the bottom you can change your options how you want to use those numbering systems there but I'm going to click backspace, brings me back up to my main page and I don't want the numbering system so I'm going to click on line numbers and click none. Next, hyphenation says what it does on the box. So let's put automatic. So how that works is every time we do a new line it will automatically hyphenate it. Now how this run works, if a word runs out of room on hyphenation it will automatically add a little hyphen between. Let me show you what I mean. Normally when a word runs out of room it will put it on a new line for you and you can tend to lose your formatting options so let's try that out, so I'm going to come back to here and delete that I'll come back to there, so we've got a left off another see as I'm typing person it's gone down to the next line 
Now if I use hyphenation, let's do the same thing again, you can see what it's done, hyphenation. It's split it with a hyphen. So that's usually if you need to hyphenate it, or you can do it manually. And again, you've got hyphenation options, and you can choose automatic hyphenate document, and whether or not you want it in caps. And again, you can choose it, there's no limit on that. So here's your first section, which is your page setup. Next is your indents. I know you have indents if you go back to home and you have your indent option just at the top here as well. Increase and decrease indents. But also you can change your indents here. So if you see if I'm clicking on it, change the whole lot here. And that's your indent. And again you've got the same option indent from the right in. You can have spacing if you want. That's before your paragraph and spacing after your paragraph there as well if you need it to separate that. There's a few bases to get you up and running on a layout tab. Again there's a lot more to it but have a little play with that. Just gives you the fundamentals. This section has already been covered in other tabs for example insert tab and picture format so I never covered it in this section.